A food allergy diagnosis changes your life. It affects you, your family, your education, your career, your everything. That being said, as with all adversity in life, you have choices on how you can handle it. Some people choose to raise their hands, stand up, and get involved as advocates. They look food allergy right in the face and say, I've got this. And they focus their energy on empowering others to feel the same way. These food allergy warriors range in age and background, but have one thing in common. They turned their food allergy story into action. Now I'm gonna shine a light on them to inspire you to join the fight against food allergies. This is Take Action with Hillary Carter. Hello and welcome to Take Action. I'm Hillary Carter. I'm a food allergy mom, a food allergy advocate, and a proud member of FAIR's Board of Governors. Today, I am so excited to chat with Kyle Dine. If you guys somehow don't know who he is, he's a food allergy entrepreneur, a food allergy educator, a musician, a puppeteer, a speaker. This is one busy, busy man. We have so much to chat about. Mr. Kyle Dine, thank you for joining me today. Hey, Hillary, thanks so much for having me. I feel like I know you, even though this is actually our first time meeting. I've watched you on social media for years, and you actually came to my son's school for an assembly a few years ago, and I had many, many teachers and kids tell me it was their favorite assembly ever. So I hope you come back one day. Um, but again, there's so much to chat about. I want to start with your food allergy life. So you have food allergies. Tell us what you're allergic to and tell us about that pivotal reaction on Christmas day that really sort of changed how you dealt with food allergies. Yeah, and my food allergy life spans over 30 years now, so a few, few different decades. And uh, I have allergies to peanut, tree nut, egg, fish, shellfish, and mustard. And um, for me growing up, it was a different time. There wasn't so many nonprofit organizations and awareness. And I was very cavalier about my food allergies, especially in my teen years. And when I moved away to go to, to college, to university, it, I got a lot more cavalier and it led to one really extreme reaction that happened on Christmas day. And essentially I was at a point where I wasn't asking the right questions. I wasn't as diligent as I should have been. I was with my family. We were about to have Christmas dinner. My grandma was making the turkey and busy in the kitchen. And there's all the dessert squares already out. And I'm just kind of sneaking around. I ask, can I have, have a square? And she was busy and she's, she was old. And she said, yeah, they should be just fine for you. Now, I have no business eating brownies. I'm, it's very rare I can eat brownies. And I had one and it was instant, just the, the swelling, especially of my throat. And I had a lot of reactions before that, but that was the one where it was a whole nother ball game. And it really changed the trajectory of my life. You know, I've, I've heard similar stories and we have lived similar stories where you might have had mild reactions or maybe even anaphylaxis, but not really scary anaphylactic reactions. And I have a theory called the haves and the have nots. Like once you have seen a very scary life threatening reaction, you just are changed forever. But you took that experience and you pivoted towards education and towards empowerment and used your skills as a musician and an entertainer towards good. So tell us about your education work, your assemblies. I know you've been in like over 900 schools. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, you know, after that reaction, I knew I was not the only one thinking that way. The only one who wasn't taking their allergies as seriously as they could have. And I kind of brought it back to what was missing in my life? What, why was I that way? And I think about when I was a kid and how food allergies were really just kind of pushed under the carpet. And if there was someone in front of me when I was five or six or seven saying, hey, Kyle, it's okay to have a food allergy. Be confident, it's normal. Your friends will understand. 
And instead, I just kind of hid them and I was never that confident with them. So for me, I wanted to get that message out there to kids that it is okay to have food allergy. You're normal. You can live the best life possible. You don't have to let them slow you down. Um, but I wanted it to come out in a fun way that's relatable to kids. So it's not just a lecture, but uh, I picked up my guitar that I was a musician and I started writing these fun songs to educate kids about uh, food allergies, key messages about not keeping their reaction a secret, you know, to not say no to when someone shares food. And of course, I brought in puppets into the act too, which quickly became way more famous than I am. Kids just love puppets. So it all just came into this big variety show where I would go school to school and um, still am the only person that's really doing that in terms of edutainment for food allergy in schools. It's really amazing. And the, the well, this is probably not a great metaphor with all of us with food allergies, but the nut that you cracked is that what I have found in food allergy advocacy is that so often we are speaking to ourselves, we're speaking to our own community. And guess what? Most of us, hopefully all of us know the messages, but what, who we need to enter, uh, entertain but educate is everybody else. And so by getting into these schools and hitting all of these kids at such a young age and the, the parents, the faculty, you're really finding a special way to get that message that a lot of us struggle to get across. So I think it's amazing. Um, and I know that so much of your content is online. So if people right now would like to go find your songs or your shows, where can they look? Yeah, if, if you're looking for some new tunes for your van, uh, you can go right on uh, Spotify, on Apple Music and just look up Kyle Dine and, and you'll find some, some food allergy tunes to, to get on. Um, but I also have a professional DVD or video where it goes through all of the key topics that I cover in an assembly. And there's two videos, one's for grades K, kindergarten through two, and another one for older grades, three to five. And if you go to foodallergyvideo.com, both of those are streaming live uh, for free. So you can watch them again and again. That's so awesome. And for parents who are watching this at home, like this doesn't have to be an assembly. I know not everyone can have you in their school. So this would be such a great educational tool to watch together, watch with your friends, watch on a play date. So thank you for that incredible work. I know it's affected so many people. It's awesome. Um, but let's pivot a little bit. Let's talk about what you're really, really working on now, which is Equal Eats, such an important, important organization. Tell us exactly what you're doing. Yeah, so this this pandemic has really provided me an opportunity to obviously I'm not in schools, I'm not traveling as much. So it's been a really neat time to focus on this organization and it's called Equal Eats. It's a company that I started years ago under the name Allergy Translation, and it did exactly that. I created professional cards for people that would translate their food allergies into foreign languages. And this was born out of a, a, almost a nightmare trip that I had years ago in Morocco, where I just didn't do enough planning. Um, I made a lot of assumptions and then I realized, wow, I don't speak Arabic and it's <laughs> very difficult to read this beautiful language. So um, I ate a, really just a backpack full of granola bars for a week that I brought from home and realized that there's a real need here. So um, I went back and did my master's degree a couple of years ago in entrepreneurship and I focused, I kind of really doubled down on this and rebranded it to Equal Eats, uh, new cards, plastic cards that um, on one side you have your food allergy in English, the other side here's a Spanish example. Um, but across 50 different languages, 35 allergens or special diets, and then with, mo uh, like me, most people, almost 50% have a, a long list of food allergies or multiple food allergies. So we offer customized cards, and there's a database of over 500 foods that you can choose and make your card from. So I still get surprised there's still foods that we don't have, but we're getting pretty close to saying, we, I think we've got it. <laughs> I feel like 500 has got to be almost there. That's amazing. And I know that you went through a very strenuous pro a process to really make sure you had this right. So tell everyone about how you use local language speakers, like all of the process you went through. Please tell us. Sure. Um, it was intense. And, and this was really my second shot at this business. I remember when I first started it, um, I thought it was a quite easy thing to do. 
after years of running it, I realized if this is going to be done really, really well, it has to go through a full design thinking process. And, and that's not just the layout of the card, but most importantly, the content. And that went through a very rigorous process where essentially I either spoke to or got feedback from 1800 people on the content of these cards, because wow. the more people I talk to, and this is at conferences, this is online, through phone interviews, everyone had their own interpretation. There's no black and white way to communicate your food allergy. And it was so interesting to get all of that feedback. And then I took that feedback from the community, from food allergy community, celiac community, the vegan community, halal, kosher, intolerance communities. And then I started talking and gathering an advisory team of chefs, wait staff, uh, management of restaurants. And then we really tried to strike this balance of not only what we as a community, as patients want to say, but what restaurants need to hear. And we were finding that there was there was not always there we're not always in sync and sometimes the messaging that we use is, is not very helpful for them as much as we feel it can be um, they really just want the black and white what is it what's the classification what are the restrictions and how can we help so we really tr went through that process of trying to squeeze out this perfect message that you know we can be happy with and they can understand and at this point, we're starting to get uh, linguistic specialists. Um, so we, we're really nailing down the terms that can be easy to translate, because sometimes the words are just very convoluted in English and hard to translate. So um, long and short, we, we kept on narrowing down this process, both with the layout, with the content. We finally got to the translation stage, which is the main key, uh, key component here. And with that, what I really wanted to, um, to, to do is have a, a really sturdy process. And this is hard with language. There's no, there's no exact science, because if you go to one end of Italy to the other end, things change with language. So it does differ country by country. But for, for this product, for a language by language, we started off with a professional translation. So getting a, our actual human that professional, who is a professional in that language. And then the second tier was a professional proofreader. So someone that would do a double check on that. And after that, just, just to make sure, uh, and I, I drove people crazy during this process. I, I, I wanted a native speaker, someone who can actually talk the talk to do that final review and make sure that this is not just an academic translation, but this actually is going to work in a restaurant um, in that country. There were a couple changes, and then I went back to the translation agency, drove them crazy because I don't think they've ever been triple checked before. But I think as a community, this is what we deserve for a communication tool that we can believe in, rely on, and it's accurate. So I'm really proud of the process. I'm, I was extremely tired of the process, but I also knew. I was going to say, you must be exhausted when you were all done. <laughs> I said, but I knew, you know, that was my pandemic project of just a ton of, of, of translation work and connecting with people. I feel like that's a pretty good COVID baby. So many people have projects that were their COVID babies. That's a really good one. And I loved looking online at all of the different options. You mentioned there's the custom and then there's the ones that are sort of your templates, but you not only list the allergens, but also what it can be found in, which I think is really helpful. And then like a nice little section on the bottom talking about cross-contamination and, you know, clean gloves, clean space, clean knives, all of that. And then saying thank you and showing gratitude. You somehow do manage to get a lot in that little card. And it's, it's really amazing. I haven't, my, I have two boys with food allergies. We haven't left the country with them yet, but one day, I'm taking those cards with me. So yeah. I think it's really impressive. And this was sort of born out of, I know you mentioned your trip that was kind of a disaster, but you are really into travel and you've traveled extensively with food allergies. And so this is the, the need that you found. Tell me for our people who are watching, who are kind of afraid to travel, sort of like me, what would your tips be for how to safely travel? Obviously bring your Equal Eats card, but what other tips would you provide? Yeah, and and you know, for me, it's it's not just food allergy. My wife has celiac disease, and we both love to travel. We have a five-year-old daughter. Somehow, does not have any restrictions. 
Um, but yeah, so far so good. But the three of us just love to travel. And, you know, for me as an allergic adult, the, the precautions I take obviously have a card. Um, I'm always doing a lot of planning and research ahead of time. And that, that goes from insurance to make sure, making sure that I'm covered for any type of health emergency in a foreign country. Uh, we bring a lot of food with us as backup still, even though you know we feel pretty confident communicating. We've been to some places a little bit off the grid where we still just enjoyed to have our own food that we knew 100% we trust. So that, that we still do quite often. And um, yeah, it's, it's really, for me, I don't like too many surprises. As much as spontaneity on a trip is great, I like you know adventure and all of this to be advent, uh, spontaneous. But when it comes to food, I plan it out. I really have an itinerary ahead of time. So I know on this day, we're gonna to try to hit this place because I've researched it, I've talked to them. And I do just a lot, a lot of advanced planning. So when my stomach is grumbling in some foreign <laughs> place, I'm not making these uh, crazy decisions. So I really do like to have a pretty solid plan. Those are all really good pieces of advice and so important. And I hope that as the world continues to open up, we all can travel again safely. So thank you for sharing that. I did want to loop back quickly. You were talking about your advisors for Equal Eats. And I was looking on your website. It's really impressive group of people, like a lot of very serious food allergy heavy hitters. Tell us what it's like to work with all of these rock stars. Yeah, they really are. And, you know, Chef Keith Norman um, Chef Joel Schaefer, these, these two are just giants in terms of food service and, and food allergy management. So I've learned so much just by surrounding myself with people that, uh, that are so knowledgeable in these different areas. I have so many blind spots and I'm, I'm really cognizant of that. So I really wanted to have people around me that, that were knowledgeable in these areas. So a dietitian to make sure that we're for offer, you know, giving a standard message with nutrition um, when we're offering these cards. My advisor is just from a food allergy perspective, celiac, vegan, food service. Um, and then even just from um, futuristic advisors, we're kind of looking at where could we go next, where um, this has been really interesting, where we're looking at how can we affect change, not only in just our community and how we communicate and are confident um, communicating, but on the other side with the food service industry, because I, I imagine you've probably had some, some experiences where they just don't get it. And as much as I use my card and I tell them my allergies, sometimes it doesn't matter. It, you know, the training is not there. The education is not there. And, and that's what we're starting to look at of how can we help out restaurants in the food service industry by you know, pushing a galvanizing a mass of people that use cards that are in our in our community to the places that actually do want to cater to them and do a good job at that. So I'm very- That lucky would be a win-win. That. That'd be a win-win right. for everyone. Yeah. Right. And you also answered my next question, which is what's next for you? Um, I know that all of us in the food allergy community would love for things to be better at restaurants and more consistent. So Thank you for thinking ahead and getting and getting that work done. We can't wait to see what happens in the future. Yeah, it's it's another huge design thinking process. But you know, if if it was easy, it would have been done by now and it would have been solved. So it's going to be another big community lift of an effort. And uh, looking forward to just talking with more groups and people and moms and dads and individuals to um, to get everybody's perspective on it. That's awesome. I want to just sort of bring it all back to empowerment, which really seems to be the theme of all of your work. So I love all of your messages. I was watching some of your videos, food allergies rock, and how you can't change your food allergies, but you can change your perspective and how you look at it. Such an important message for young adults, for children, for adults in life, much less with food allergies. So tell us a little bit sort of your mantras, how you think about all of this, how you share this with other people, what's helpful for you to keep yourself positive? Yeah. I, and I think that this is a great, great um, segue because everything I do is to make things better. 
And it's obviously better for myself because I'm directly affected by food allergy, but for this community, because we have, I've grown up with food allergies for over 30 years. And I just feel like I've been conditioned in that time to, to, to almost feel like a victim sometimes and to be shy about them and to, to want to, to, you know, hide them under the rug. And that's not right. This is, you know, this is not something that any of us chose. This is not something I signed up for, but it's trying to flip that table of why, why am I a victim here? I shouldn't be, this is a normal thing. It affects millions of people. And it's time that we start to, to use our voice and not feel ashamed of them and not be defined of them and to be empowered over them. Because once you flip that script, your life gets so much better and you don't, you're not shy away from it anymore. And for me, it's, it's all the difference just from, I remember buddies growing up, like, you know, jiving me about my food allergies and I would just take it. And now it's a fully different story. I just, okay, buddy, like you have no idea what you're talking about. And, you know, I can just set them straight with a couple of facts because I'm, I'm very grounded in who I am and what I, what I deal with now. So I think that empowerment piece, it equals quality of life. And for me, I wanna share that with as many people as possible in our community because we deserve it. Um, and no one deserves to grow up feeling um, small for something that they never chose in the first place. I love all of that so much. I always talk about controlling what you can control. So you can't control the allergies, but you certainly can control how you feel about it, how you deal with it. So I love all of those messages. It's so, so important, especially for everyone, but for people watching the show. So thank you so much for that feedback. I also know that entrepreneurship is near and dear to your heart. And I know you like to encourage people to get involved in the space. So this show is called Take Action. If we have people watching who have a little business idea in their mind or want to get involved in the community in some way, what would be your tips to get started? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think number one is what bothers you? You know, think think of that pain point that you deal with every day or every time you do something. And if there's no solution for it, why not you? Why not you think about it, think through it? Um, and, and I think for any budding entrepreneur, it's so important to talk to people. I can't stress that enough. Everyone thinks that they have the idea and it's set and it's perfect. There's never been an idea that's ever been perfect and set at the get go. So it's so important to put out your work, put it out there, talk to people, get feedback. When I have young entrepreneurs reach out to me and I am just, I say right away, you are the smartest young <laughs> entrepreneur because you're just reaching out and I can give you some feedback on things that you might not have known about. And so I would say, start with the idea, get feedback on it and keep it, keep it growing, keep iterating and then get it out to the world. Such great advice. It's really important. I know that we all like think we know everything, but we don't. <laughs> That's also just another important life tip. You don't know what you don't know. So ask around. That's great. And yeah. while we're here talking about tips, do you have resources you'd like to share? Obviously, everyone can check out your website, kyledine.com. Check out equaleats.com. But just in your food allergy life, do you have other resources that you depend upon for accurate information, tips, community that you'd like to share? Well, obviously one is fair. I'm, I'm a huge fan of their, of their newsletter um, and all of that constant information. This is how I stay up to date on research and they do a great way of paring it down, making it lay friendly. So um, this, this was sorely missing when I was growing up for my parents and family to get that accurate current information that affects your life and how you interpret a may contain label and things like this, things do change. So fair is on top of it. And I appreciate that. Um, beyond that, uh, I love to, I, I love, I'm a research guy. So anything in Jackie, the journal of, of allergy and clinical immunology, and then any type of um, medical bracelets, whatever your, your brand is, this is so crucial that you, um, especially kids have one as well. So there's lots out there. Allergic Living is a great resource that uh, I also rely on. Um, but beyond that, I always say just go for credible. Make sure that you're, um, you know, you're getting support in the right places, but you're getting credible information in the right places too. 
Absolutely, because there's a lot of misinformation out there. So such an important point. And for anyone who doesn't know Thera's website, it's foodallergy.org. Um, thank you so much. There's so much wealth of information here. I would just love to hear any closing thoughts, any last little nugget you'd love to leave with the audience. Yeah, I think overall, I would, I'll probably harp back on the empowerment piece in that if you are a newly diagnosed parent right now, your kid's been, been diagnosed with a food allergy, it's hard. It's very difficult. It's hard to know where to turn. And it's hard to think in 20 years from now where your child will be. And I'd like to just reassure all the parents out there that this is doable and it's manageable, this condition. You can manage it with proper medicine with you, with epinephrine um, and all these tools and tactics to, to stay vigilant. So it is okay. It does get easier with time. Kids, if you're having a tough time, you're gonna get you're going to get more comfortable with it. It's going to get easier. And by the time you're an old guy like me, um, you, you can honestly say food allergies rock, which is strange to say. But in the, when you start flipping things around and you start narrating how you want this to be perceived by others, I rock my food allergies. And, and that's how it is. And if you want to get to that point, you absolutely can. So um, for anybody who's starting out on this road, it, it's totally manageable and you can do it. That's also amazing. And I mean, as a mom of two boys, eight and 10, almost nine and 11, literally nothing gives me more joy and hope than seeing a grown up who is thriving with food allergies and has such an awesome perspective. And I do agree with you, food allergies are kind of what make you who you are. Everyone has something they deal with. This is just our thing. Um, and I love all of your, your thoughts and perspective. So positive, so empowering. Thank you so much. I think we covered all the websites, but tell us where we can find you and Equal Eats on social media. Yeah, so if you just search up Equal Eats on Instagram, on Facebook, you'll find it. And then just my name, Kyle Dine on uh, Instagram, Facebook. If you just search up food allergy music, there is a 100% chance you're probably going to find me. <laughs> I don't think there's too many people. Um, but yeah, just I'm on Instagram, pretty active on there. And it's equaleats.com if you're interested in cards. Awesome. And do you have any virtual events coming up that we should look out for? Would back to uh, the closing it out with the beginning with the assemblies. Yeah, you know, not 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 anything right now. That's uh, I'm probably going to be touring again at some point, but I'm starting to, to veer off some of the the virtual events. But it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, like performing in slippers in my in my living room. <laughs> but uh, I do really look forward to the energy connecting with kids um, and educating about food allergies in person someday again. That will be awesome. Well, everyone can follow you on social media and keep a lookout for your schedule. And in the meantime, look on your website and YouTube for all your previous work. This was such a pleasure. I'm so grateful for your time. I'm grateful for everyone for watching this episode. Again, if you're looking for food allergy information, check out FAIR, foodallergy.org. If you'd like to follow along with me, I'm at hillarytollcarter.com and on social media at Hillary Toll Carter. Kyle, it was such a treat to finally meet you. You totally rock. Thank you for teaching us that food allergies rock. And I hope you have an awesome day. Thanks again. You too. You rock too. Thanks everybody. Bye.